Hey everyone and welcome to my craft room. Uh, today I'm recording the first of our tutorial videos for um, the February uh, class by mail which features the sweet strawberry bundle which is the stamp set and the punch. Um, the first card I'm going to do is this little one here. It's called a layered stamped card for anyone who hasn't uh, seen those before. Um, it's quite nice. It just sort of adds a little bit of dimension to, uh, to, to what could be a quite plain card. Um, they're really, really easy to do. The, the effect is quite, uh, quite nice. Uh, it looks more complicated than it is. So it's, hopefully when you watch this video, you'll see what I mean. Just bear with me. I'm going to check my check my video my volume that looks all right okay so this is what your cards going to look like uh, eventually when you finished it um, the colors are in the little flowers flirty flamingo and the um, the leaves are go um, granny apple green and most the, the cardstock is uh, the colored cardstock is also uh, granny apple green and uh, very vanilla or basic white depending on when you're actually watching this movie and what we have available Anyway, so what I'll do is start off with this one. Here's what your kit will look like. There's actually two lots of cards in each kit. And this has actually got two lots in here, but I'll use the second lot for the written instructions. So I'll just try and get out one set of cards as for as we go. Um, you'll have a card base in, as I mentioned, in Granny Apple Green. You'll have a piece of cardstock for inside, just in there like that. Pop that one aside. You have various pieces of um, scraps of um, granny apple green for um, doing our um, stamping our flowers and cutting out our flowers that we need. And then you'll have various sizes and layers of white and granny apple green. So you'll have a piece of uh, Whisper White that's just smaller than the card base for your first layer. Then there'll be a smaller layer of Granny Apple Green and then a slightly smaller layer of Whisper White. And then a smaller layer again of Granny Apple Green. And you can see there's a bit of a, bit of a um, pattern here. And then a slightly smaller layer of whisper white so that's basically what you need Ooh. I'll keep everything together else in there so I don't lose it all so that's basically what we need for assembling our card so what you tend to do with these um, layered stamp cards is get your whisper white layers just like that put your granny apple green ones aside and arrange them in size order Roughly how, you know, in in the right position, so like, uh, so that you've got the same borders all the way around, and they're nice and even and central and straight. And then what you can do is grab some um, snail adhesive or a glue dot, just something that's going to hold them temporarily in place. I'm actually out of snail adhesive at the moment, so I'm going to use a little glue dot. So just pop something temporary, something that you can remove in the centre of it just to keep it in place while you do your stamping. So just pop that there and then I'll pop another one oh, just there. So you've got a, a tiny piece of snail adhesive, some running tape, runner tape or something like that. Nothing that's going to um, uh, to um, nothing that will um, stick permanently you do, because you want to be able to remove these um, from each other when you finish stamping okay so they're sort of held in place you could give it a try with not putting anything on there but if you're anything like me that would cause um, you to move around and, and, and wouldn't be wouldn't be nice Okay, so from our stamp set now, we're going to get this cute little um, stem and leaves, uh, leaves and stems of sort of strawberry plants. This one here. I'm going to block it up and start stamping. So the idea with these layered stamped cards is that you stamp um, over all three layers of the cards that you're using. Okay. 
so just in black ink I'm going to get a foam mat just to make sure I get prop complete coverage with my photopolymer stamps you can use a foam mat a um, silicon mat just something to soften that up a little bit okay so then you can stamp your little images as I say the idea is to get it over all three layers so that you have that interesting effect so we'll start there so see it's over the top and then over, over the bottom and middle layer and then onto the top layer a little bit in, in between just bring it back into place my glue dots aren't doing as good a job as they possibly could so um, tape runner would be best or snail adhesive would be better we'll bring one in here Before I go any further I might actually bring our sentiment in so for this one I'm going to use the that was so sweet of you uh, yes so sweet of you I'll just block that up and the reason I'm going to do this now is just so I don't go over the position I want to put that in with my final little um, little leaves just for the positioning so just there and the top layer bottom left hand corner there we are and then I can put in my final little set of leaves just there here we are Okay, so you could now sort of bring in sort of on the edges, fill in the gaps with um, with some more of these little shapes and leaves. I might, might actually do that. I haven't done it on my example, but I was actually thinking my example was a little bit plain when I was looking at it. We'll just bring in some more, just maybe top and bottom, just where that gap is there. There we are. And I think that's probably enough. Okay. So now we're going to grab our blends or our markers or whatever it is that you, you like to colour in with. I'm using the blends in the uh, Granny Apple Green and Flirty Flamingo. I should have got out, but I haven't. There's our, flir Oop, there's our Flirty Flamingo. And our... Brown and apple green, hopefully. Yes, dark and light. There we are. So, uh, you can blend these whichever way you like. Um, I'll show you my favourite way of doing this particular one is with my dark, starting on the leaves, my dark granny apple green, basically colouring in probably 95% of the image and just leaving a light, a white blank. Um, at the very tips of the leaves just like that try and keep your layers lined up as best you can while you're colouring and try also to um, where an image sort of goes over several layers, just sort of try and keep the keep the colouring in sort of as complete as possible. Try not to leave too many white white gaps. 
there will always be some stamping gaps with this technique but they will be covered once we bring in the the granny apple green layers as we were discussing before okay so as i say this is my dark granny apple green just trying to keep those layers lined up as best I can while I'm colouring. And then once I've done the dark granny apple green I'm just going to bring in the light just to do the the very edges of those leaves okay i think that's all yep that's the leaves as i say now i'll bring in my light granny apple green and just complete to the edge of the leaf You can blend it a little bit, but it's not too bad. lovely okay so then we'll do the same with our flirty flamingo so you can use your dark flirty flamingo and just put a sort of a darker circle on the insides of each of these little flowers and this one here's like a little bud so I'm going to do that completely in dark flirty flamingo buds are often that little bit darker aren't they before they completely come out completely unfold okay there we are then bring in the light and just finish the rest and then you might want to blend that dark and that light a little bit together and whatever you're using you can use markers or pencils if you're using blends this is what I think is the best way to get the best results We've still got our three layers there together and as I said if an image overlaps just try and get the colour as complete as you can just so it goes right up to the edge of one sheet and end of one layer and onto the other. Okay so that is our coloured um, little coloured panels there our three of them then what I might do is bring in in the set there is a single small single small flower and this is the one that's actually comes you can punch this one out with the um with the punch so here's that that one there what i do is just stamp a few of these around where we've got some blank spaces that and colour 
those in as well. Same way as we did with the dark in the center. Then bring the light in for the petals. It's really sweet okay so now what we're going to do is um, separate our layers so depending on what adhesive you've used just give it a bit of a twist until they come apart there we are so we've got three separate layers now we'll bring back in our granny apple greens the three the two layers of granny apple green and the card base just move these things out of the way a little bit and we can layer it up so obviously this little one here will go on this one just grab some glue you can tell it's warm in the craft room because the glue tends to expand and ooze out so be careful about that if it's warm where you are which if you're in Australia or you are in Australia, it's just about everywhere is warm at the moment. So the little stamped panel goes on your small granny apple green layer. Just like that. And then this middle size one goes on the next size up. This large one obviously goes onto the front of our card base. Make sure I get it the right way up. I don't want to muck it up and have, have the wrong way up. So I want it all to be. So that one goes, make sure I've got it all right. Okay, so that one goes that way. And then Okay, yeah, so that's right, that's the right way up. Okay, and then this one can pop on there. And so line them up so that your images sort of continue on from each other, so they're sort of like, um, sort of unbroken well, the, the continuous lines so that the lines sort of match up, the leaves match up. So like putting together a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. There's obviously going to be the gap of the green in between, but that's, uh, that's not a problem. You're actually just making sure that the lines are all continuous. And we'll put this last one on. After a big gush of glue, it's now decided to stop. one on top again line up your stems and your straight lines and your flowers and everything so that they look like continuous lines there we are okay so that's the most of that card there mostly done we're just going to put on some some of the pretty bits now so what you can probably what, what I've given you these little extra pieces of cardstock for is to get, bring back that um, that little flower that we've punched before. Just punch some individual ones in black. So say maybe four, four or five, whatever you you'd like. Now get my punch right. So I put them in because we're going to have to punch them. We need it lined up properly. So it's going to come in that way. Okay. So we want, we don't want 
to do them so we're going to ruin them by punching them out and ruining the next one so I'll just do the four, three, and four. Careful, I've got a bit of ink on my finger there. just got four little flowers there I'm just going to color them again just going to put them in all dark just so they're a little bit different from the original ones that's up to you and then I'm going to grab some dimensionals And mount them up so they've got a nice little bit of height. Well, I'm actually going to cover over some of the original flowers with these ones and then just put some sort of individually by themselves as well it's entirely up to you just do what you what you like what you think you like best it needs something over there anyway There we are. So we've got some little 3D flowers there as well. You've also got some. Um, you've also got some uh, rhinestones with your kit, so you can use I think three of those per card, just to give it a little bit of something special as well. quite sweet isn't it I quite like that one I really love this design of card as I say you can turn something fairly normal and ordinary into something quite special with that and I think actually I'd probably do another couple of those little 3d flowers and pop them on there as well but you've got plenty of card stock there and you've got your punch and your pens or whatever you're using to color in so you can probably choose to do as many or as as few of those as you actually like so there we are, that's card number, oh, haven't put inside. There's our inside panel here. Pop our inside panel in. And then you can choose whether you want to stamp some stuff on that as well. Pop a, um, a thank you in there or something. Just like that. Okay, so that is card number one of our February class by mail. Hope you enjoyed that one. As I say, it's a lovely technique. Um, once you've got the sizes of the layers, which I'll pop into your written instructions for you, and once you've got the size of the layers right, you can basically use that technique um, with any sort of nice stamp set that you've got that will, will sort of overlap the, the layers. Really, really nice. Um, anyway, so that's card number one. Um, I'll do some tidying up and come back with card number two very shortly. <laughs>